just a moment. If there's a better time of the year to cover this game than the middle of spring, then I can't think of it. Before SSX and after Cool Borders and Alpine Surfer, 1080 Snowboarding was an in-house Nintendo entry to Extreme Sports from the same group behind Wave Race 64. But they weren't alone as they had sponsorship backing from both Tommy Hilfiger Clothing and Lamar Snowboards. Merchandising! Merchandising! Compared to its competition at the time, 1080 looked pretty great. They covered the joints between each part of the border, so instead of looking all blocky like in other titles, the people here looked much more natural. The same can be said for their animations. Everything blends together well and looks more natural when you're ducking, jumping, doing tricks, slowing down, or even crashing. Hell, they even added little details, like how clothes ripple at high speeds, or making it so not only does your board leave a path in the snow and carve through turns, but if you lean front side and your hand hits the ground, that leaves a trail as well. Speaking of, the roster only consists of five riders, all of which have stats which tend to make them either straight up downhill or stunt riders, except for Kensuke Kimachi. There are eight boards and only a little under half of them can be justified for use due to some having vastly superior stat lines. That is, until you figure out how to unlock the ability to ride a penguin, or play as a block of golden ice, or a panda which can do front and back flips. On a related note, forget everything I said about things in this game looking natural. As for how the game feels, it really depends on how you're playing it. If you're doing trick attack runs, 1080 can be frustrating. Not just because the regular courses require going through gates to keep the timer going, but despite the praise it got at the time, tricks are a pain in the ass to pull off most of the time. Even back then, I did not like the trick system. You have a set number of grabs and can do spins up to the 1080 namesake. Grabs require holding B and a direction, but often you'll end up doing the grab for holding B and no directions. There's a weird delay in which you hold B, then move the stick in a direction and have to hold it long enough to register. Assuming it registers at all, this game loves eating inputs. The spins, however, are far worse. Rather than the Tony Hawk games where you just hold a direction or mash a shoulder button to spin, 1080 works like this. R and a direction does a 180, and can be added to the end of any spin to do 540s and 900s. R and a stick rotation does a 360. R and a rotation, followed by R and V and a rotation, is a 720. The 1080 is R and a rotation, then R and B and a rotation, then R, B, and Z and a rotation. Getting this to register consistently requires abnormally precise timing and the game not mistaking a stick rotation for a 180, which happens quite a bit. For both spins and grabs, there were several times I would barely get anything to register. Oh, and because the spins are canned animations, you can't do grabs while rotating. Even doing so in the middle of a run doesn't net any extra points. Where 1080 really shines though is its downhill racing. You can crouch to go faster, but it makes turning stiffer than if you're standing up straight. So throughout a race, you're balancing speed and maneuverability, trying not to slam into every wall, fence, tree, or house along the way because there's a damage meter. If it fills all the way, you retire and lose the race. It certainly helps that, unlike the Tony Hawk games, jumping and speeding up are assigned to different buttons, so you won't have to worry about accidentally jumping when you want to slow down or make a tighter turn. The terrain also plays a big role, as your speed and steering are affected by it. Whether you're in knee-deep powder, packed snow, or sliding along ice or otherwise frozen terrain. And beyond the first couple courses, they tend to split off in different directions. It's up to you which way works best, depending on your board and your rider. Match Race is entirely focused on racing against the CPU, but Contest combines both racing and stunts to form a downhill slalom where you earn points by doing tricks, hitting gates, and finishing quickly. Well, when you're not on air make or hitting the half pipe. It's a fun blend of the two styles of play, and it led me to spend several nights going back and forth with friends, seeing who could post the top combined score. This all blends together with the soundtrack, which is equal parts strange and somehow appropriate. My using tracks from it in a few of my past videos should give some idea of what I think about it, but it uses elements of rock, rap, and drum and bass. It also used voice samples quite often, most notably for the character select screen and for Crystal Lake. Now go home, Jason, it's not that Crystal Lake.
Then you have the songs with voice clips, which are almost indecipherable because of the filters layered over them, or the person singing them, or both. It's an unusual mix of songs, but I still go back to the tracks for Golden Forest and Work Your Body pretty often. While better overall packages for a snowboarding fix may exist now, 1080 Snowboarding is still one of my go-to games for racing, both downhill and slalom. The title track seals the deal, as it's the kind of song I can listen to over and over and come up with different lyrics for it every time. For example... Friendly bee!